us stand to our feet. Hallelujah. We serve an awesome God, amen. A God who's worthy to be praised, amen. Hallelujah. We bless you, oh God. We magnify you. We lift you up, God. We're just here to give you glory and honor, God, to give you praise, Father God. To worship you, God, with all of our heart, Father God, with all of our mind, Father God, with our bodies. We just want to give you glory and honor, God, so that you would be glorified and lifted up this morning. Hallelujah. We bless you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Mm So 
Oh 
so glad that he's given us authority to speak and think, and it is so. Hallelujah. Come on, lift your voices. When I lift, when I lift my voice and shout, everyone. Yeah. 
Jesus to be in the darkness. He has never lost a battle. some encouragement. Let them know that you're in control, my God. We pray for those that are just uh, uh, sick from the, from, from the COVID or any other thing, heart disease or diabetes, Lord, we ask you to, uh, uh, for healing for those people as well, my Lord. You are a healer, Lord. So we come to you for our healing. For all those who lost ones in the this pandemic, Heavenly Father, we pray for their comfort right now, Lord. Bring them their, their peace and their joy back in their lives, my Lord. We're still uh, throwing up prayers for the people in your valley, Heavenly Father. Continue to mend hearts, Lord. Mend minds, Heavenly Father. Bring comfort to that region right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. We need your wisdom, Father. We're praying for wisdom and courage and knowledge and understanding for this time in our lives. And God, we want to thank you for all that you've done, all that you're doing, and all that you're going to do. Thank you for loving us, Father, with an unconditional love, a limitless love, an immeasurable love. Father, thank you for your love. We love you, God. We give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. In your precious Son, Jesus' name, we pray. Lord, thank you for allowing us to come before your throne. We give you all the glory, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Lord, we just can't thank you enough. Thank you for your presence in this place. Thank you for touching lives. Thank you for touching hearts. Thank you for touching all those that's out there viewing right now, my Lord. We pray that your spirit going through that, 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 that the, 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 the Facebook view is like a tidal wave. Changing lives, changing minds in the name of Jesus. Glory to you, Lord. Let everybody say amen. amen. Hallelujah. hallelujah. Come on, say hallelujah. hallelujah. Give God the highest praise. Amen. Come on, give God a hand of praise. I'm thanking God that he protected me through the night. Amen. I'm thanking God that he woke me up to his new day that he's made, a day that we never saw before, that we're not going to ever see again. This day, my God, I mean, 
Uh, that's exciting for me. I don't know if it's exciting for you guys. Uh, I've, I've, I've been to several funerals. I've uh, uh, preached several, several eulogies. Uh, uh, I have several phone calls where people have not made it to this day. Had uh, kin people, sisters, uh, cousins have not made it today. And I just thank God for giving me a, one more day. <laughs> I'm hoping to give me one more day tomorrow. We don't know what tomorrow's going to bring, but I'm praying to God that I'd be in that day. But this is what I know for sure. Every man and woman on this planet has to die. Every one of us. And here's the thing. It's a reality check. It was a reality check for me. Every man and woman will have eternal life. Every man and woman will have eternal life. Now, I know what you're saying. Well, you're thinking about heaven. No, I'm thinking about eternal life. Because your spirit man will not die. He's going to live forever, for eternity. Either in heaven or in hell. Let me say that again. Either in heaven or in hell. We need and we should be getting prepared to live eternity in heaven. Okay? That's where we want to go, to heaven. What is the preparation that we have to take to make to go to heaven? It's in God's word. I woke up with a scripture on my mind. I want you to go there and look at it. 2 Corinthians 3.16. The Lord woke me up. When I woke up, that scripture came straight to me. And I said, okay, Lord, I've heard the scripture several times. All scripture is God read. And it's useful for my teaching, my correcting, my rebuking. That's right. Okay? I know that, God. Why are you bringing that up to my mind? I need you to know, Pastor Mike, that all the words in the Bible is coming from me. All the words in the Bible is true and real. And you need it. To get prepared to have eternal life in heaven. I just want to tell you that. God told me, I told you. Reality check. That we got to spend eternity somewhere. Where do you want to spend eternity? If you want to spend eternity in heaven, God says his word is good for correction, rebuking, teaching. Okay? So the man of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. The man of God, me and you, you can be thoroughly equipped for every good work. And that word, living his word, living his word, doing what his word says, will, will grant you eternal life in heaven. Okay? And I'm not just saying read his word, I'm just I'm saying this. The, his word tells us that what we need to do to have eternal life. Right? Y'all remember that? Yes. Yeah. Confess that Jesus Christ is Lord yeah. and believe in your heart yeah. that God raised him from the dead. That's it. And that's in his word. I just want to give you that because the Holy Spirit is leading me to tell you that this morning. That we got to have that reality check all the time. That God is working it out for us all the time. I just need to tell you that. Amen. I need to tell you that out there listening. I need to tell you that. You need to know it. Tell somebody else what I just told you. Amen. Amen. Good morning, Hustle Prayer Fellowship Church. We had to see you guys this morning. Did I tell you I love you? If I have not said that I love you guys, I love you guys. I love you. Thank you. We here are maximizing ministry and minimizing maintenance in the lives of the believers. We are warriors here. We're going to teach you this word till you can't stand it no more, till you have to give it to somebody else, and every word that's coming out of your mouth is coming from the word of God. That's where we want you at, right there. Telling somebody the word, teaching somebody the word. Okay? Giving it to someone else. I want to thank all of our members and all our viewing guests for tuning in this morning. The God we serve is an able God and a mighty God. 
and he will deliver us. Whatever situation you're going through, God will deliver you from that situation. Yeah, yeah. Know that our God is in total control. And guess what, y'all? We are here for such a time as this. I just want to put that out there. Glory to you, Lord. Come on, guys. I want you to worship me this worship God this morning. Put your tithes and offering, amen. Come on, give me a, give me a, a, a praise. Yeah. I, I, know when I, I, got, I know when I remember when I used to get paid when I was younger, you know, making, making four or $500 a week. It was good money, good money back in those days, you know, in 1982 and 83, that was good money. And I tell you, man, when I got my check, I got to the church on Sunday morning after I came from the club on Saturday night. And I broke that dollar out, man, and put it in the offering receptacle, and that was it, man. I did, I did my thing. I've been for two hours. I gave some of my money. It's time to move on. Amen. Getting ready for Wednesday night, because Wednesday night was latest night. Getting ready for the week. That was that mindset I was in. God showed me and taught me, which I'm trying to show you and teach you. If you don't know, but most of you guys at House of Prayer already know that we always start at a tent. That's where we start. We started a tenth of our, our resources to give to the Lord because we know that the windows of heaven is going to open at 10%. So now here's the thing. God has not changed that nowhere in my Bible. No matter what you heard, God has not changed that. Now I remember reading, well, when the uh, people were going to make sacrifices, they used to bring the, the, the cows and birds and doves and whatever else they had to bring for a sacrifice. And God said in this word, you don't have to do that no more. Because Jesus made the ultimate sacrifice. See, in his word, he said, we changed from that. We don't have to go there no more. But in his word, he has not told us that the windows of heaven were not open at 10%. He has not told us that. You tell me where it is in the Bible, and I, and I, and I, will, I, I will I'll stop preaching what I'm preaching. I preach that. But for as I know, if you give the Lord 10% of your resources, the word of God says you're going to open up the wounds of heaven and pour out you so much blessings that you're not going to have room enough. That has not changed. Sowing and reaping is the same. I looked up Luke 6 and 38. Now, I'm going to apologize for last week. I said Matthew 6 and 38, but it's Luke 6, 38. Chapter 6, verse 38. Go to your Bibles if you got it. I want you to see it. Because I, I need you to stand on the word of God. This is the word of God. Okay? The word of God says, give, and it will be given to you. Okay? Press down and shake it together will be poured into your lap. With the measure you use, the same measure is going to be given back to you. That's what he's saying. And it can be your offering, your giving. It could be love. It could be hate. But whatever you give, it's going to be given right back to you. Press down, shaking together, and running over. But this time, if I worship, we're going to give our tithes and offerings. Because you know what I know. I hadn't changed from that in my preaching for the last 10, 12 years, and it still works. Why are we going to change what works? Why are we going to change what works? Let's work the word, guys. Let's stand on the word. Amen. If you need an envelope this morning, raise your hand and usher to get you an envelope, a tithe envelope. Now, an offering is whatever God puts on your heart to give. Give that. And he's not going to ask you to give something you don't have. He knows what you got. He might say, Pastor Mike, I need you to give $1,000 today or $100 a day or $5 today on top of your tithe. Just do what he asks you to do. Yeah. Don't try to write no faith checks. If God didn't tell you to, if God didn't tell you to write a faith check, don't you write that check. Give what God put on your heart to give. And you start at a tent. That's where we started at the, at the house of prayer. Because we know it works. We know God's principles work. We've seen it. Amen. If you're a first time guest. Raise your hand for a guest card, and the usher will get you a guest card. If you need a prayer request card, raise your hand, and the usher will get you a prayer 
request card. We want you to fill that prayer request card out and give it and put it in the offering receptacle when it comes around. Amen. We pray for those prayer requests all the time. Every, every week we're praying. Amen. I'm taking my time here. I want you to hear. I want you to understand. I want you to trust God. Have faith in God. I remember I had to do that. Giving that dollar every Sunday, that just wasn't working for me. I was walking around with a hole in my pocket. Before the next payday, I was, $500 was gone. I didn't bought a sock, a shoe, or a hat, or nothing. It was gone. And I have to sit back and remember what I, what did I do with all that money. That's when you got a hole in your pocket. Some people had a hole in their pocket before. If you were a young man like I was, had a hole in my pocket. Got up on Monday morning, didn't have lunch money. For lunch, just made $500 on Friday. Didn't have lunch money, don't know where it went. Had to borrow money for lunch. That's the place you don't want to be in, amen? Come on, guys, let's pray. Let's pray about offering and about gift of giving, amen? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. Thank you for your knowledge and our, and our giving and our tithing, Lord. Lord, for this congregation, tithing and offering have been working from the time we started. Keeping everything going, keeping everything moving. We trust you, God. We trust your word. That's what we're standing on, your word. 24-7 is on your word, my Lord. Lord, I pray for all those that are giving today. They gave yesterday, going to give tomorrow. Lord, I pray that their harvest field be as far as the eye can see, as green as green can be. Full of prosperity and abundance. I can see it in, in my head right now, just greenery. And everything is flourishing and flowing and growing in their finances, Lord, in their lives, Heavenly Father. Prosperity and abundance, Lord. Thank you. Give it to them, my Lord. I pray that they get a hundredfold on their return, and you fill their storehouses overflowing. My God. And help everybody to be a good steward, a good steward over the finances, over the blessings that you give us all, my Lord. Lord, we're a church that's trying to stay out of debt. We're a congregation that want to be, don't want to be in debt. Show us how to get out, my Lord. You know the way. Give us courage to take that avenue for dead freedom. Father, thank you. Lord, we love you. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
There's power in the name. There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Do y'all believe that? There is power in the name of Jesus. Power in the name. Power in the name. There is power in the name. Everything got to change. Hey, everything, everything got to change. 
my Lord, everything. And you know when I say that, everything got to change. My God, my God, my God. Everything got to change. Everything got to change. My Lord. <laughs> Glory to you, Lord. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for your presence in this place, my Lord. Everything got to change. <laughs> Everything. I mean, I just think about that. Everything got to change. Everything. everything got to change when you say the name of Jesus. That, that, you know what? That should just make you just, when you wake up, say Jesus. When you're walking down the street, say Jesus. When you're going to eat breakfast, say Jesus. When you're going to work, just say Jesus. If it's going to change everything, I want to say it as much as I can. <laughs> that just makes too much sense to me. Everything changes when you say the name of Jesus, my Lord, my God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Every day, Jesus. Every minute, Jesus. Because everything got to change. My Lord. Mm. Okay. Let me, let me get back focused. But I, but I just want to tell you that <laughs> in the the name of Jesus changed everything. My God. <laughs> My God. Just the name. Come on, guys. I need you to pray with me. Be ready to receive the word of God in the name of Jesus because that name is going to change everything. Whatever position that you're in right now, this very second, when we say in Jesus' name, or say the name of Jesus, if you're in a bad position or situation or posture, he's going to give you correction because you know what? His name changes everything. My Lord. I was looking at ESPN one day, and I know you guys, some of you guys know what that is. Most of the, most of the guys know that because there's a lot of sports stuff on that channel. And two basketball players got in a confrontation. It was way back in, I don't know, before, way before the pandemic. But one player name was Ben Wallace, and the, and the other name was Ron Artest. Some of you guys know who they are. And Wallace was going in for a layup, and our, and our test was going after him. He fouled him. That's a, for you guys don't know what a foul is, he hit him real hard. And then, and then Ben got up in his anger and pushed our test in the face. Then somebody threw a bottle, a beer bottle, at our test from the stands. And he goes up in the stands, and he's enraged. He's going after that, 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 that person in the stands, that, uh, what do you call him, a fan. And he goes after him, he starts fighting him and hitting him. And when that happened, the, uh, that whole section of the arena just went, they just, they just got off. They're just going crazy. They, 
They were fighting, throwing bottles. And all the players in that little section was doing that. It took almost 30 or 40 minutes to get all those players out of that section and, and uh, calm it down and quiet it down. Now, this is what I thought about. I said, man, I wonder how many people that are in that arena, in that section right there, are Christians. How many of those people are Christians? I saw everybody fighting. I, I, and I don't say what I saw. I just saw a whole lot of people acting like they weren't Christians. I don't know how many people were in there are Christians or not. The people and the players had lost total control. It was out of control. Very few people in that little section right there. What a little section? It had about 100 people in there. Uh, they was out of control. Whether they were Christians or not, they was out of control. I want to say this. Self-control should be a part of our Christian behavior, our Christian lives, our Christian character, according to the Word of God. Our message today is entitled, Keep Yourself Under Control. But I added a little piece to that. Keep yourself under control at all times. Keep yourself under control at all times. That means every second of the day. Keep yourself under control. Self-control is the ability to exercise restraint or control over one's feeling, emotions, and reactions. Let me say that again. Self-control is the ability to exercise restraint our control over one's feelings, emotions, and reactions. In other words, having physical and emotional self-mastery. Self-mastery, self -mastery, you mean, you, it's mastered. It's that whatever happens, whatever intense situations occur, when someone incites me or uh, 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 instigates or uh, 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 angers come up or uh, 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 irate uh, situations that come toward my way, I have mastery over my emotions, my feelings, what I say and what I do. As Christian, God wants us to have self-control of our minds, our speech, this tongue, and in actions at all times. I'm going to put that in there, at all times. So when the situation gets heated, we got to be able to stay cool in the midst of the heat. Does that make sense? Stay cool, staying cool in the heat. That's where we got to be, totally self-controlled at all times. I want to just talk about three things here. Controlling our minds. Controlling our speech or controlling our tongue and controlling our actions. Okay? Mind, tongue, and actions. We're going to talk about controlling that because let's, let's start with controlling our minds. Okay? When we, what we think leads to what we say. Y'all agree, agree with that? What we think leads to what we say and what we do. Because you can get urged up and get yourself in a, in a, a frustrated situation and, and, and you just let your mind take control. And if your mind not set on the right course, you're going to do something you probably shouldn't be doing or say something you probably shouldn't say. One thing led to another in that basketball game with Artes and Wallace. And they began to lose control. And when a person loses control, it affects themselves and others. Sometimes it could lead to devastating consequences. Some of you guys maybe have been there. Let's look at what Peter says. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8. Go there. Because we're going we're gonna to deal with the mind here, because that's where we got to start with all of our actions and all the things we say. 
First Peter five and eight says this. Be alert and of sober mind. Be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. OK, now. Keeping alert and being sober. Be sober means to be self-disciplined. To think rationally. And not foolishly. Sober. Look, wait, let me say this. You know, if you ever been if you ever been intoxicated. Well, let me say this. If you ever been drunk with wine or whiskey or beer, or whatever, your mind is sometimes uncontrollable. You won't think rationally, okay? Sometimes alcohol makes you get brave and make you say some things that you sh maybe shouldn't say or what you shouldn't do. I know that because I used to be a drinker. And when I wanted to have courage to talk to a young lady, I'd take me a swig or something, and now I got courage and I can say anything I want to say. I have no fear. It does the same thing for you if you do that and intoxicate your mind and don't have no soberness about your mind. You have courage to say things and do things that you shouldn't say and do. I, I just want to clear that up. God say be sober. Then he says be alert. It means to be watchful. You're watching out for spiritual pitfalls in your life. You want to take appropriate steps to make certain that you're going to do the right thing. Okay. A sober mind will help you do that. Being alert will help you do that. Being alert wait, and uh, waiting on the spirit and knowing that the spirit is going to come to your rescue by saying, he's not going to push you out of the way. He's going to say, hey, you shouldn't say that or you shouldn't do that. Okay. He's making you upset. Hey, chill out. Walk away. Okay. Now, that's what the Holy Spirit might be telling you. But sometimes we push the Holy Spirit to a side and do what we want to do. When someone gets in your face accusing you of something that you didn't do and then they begin to call you bad names cussing at you right I mean right in your face you can see some of the little spit bubbles coming out hitting you on the face he's screaming so loud and so hard and talking about you and cussing you out saying bad things to you if you don't have a sober mind a sober mind and you're not being alert on what's getting what's going to happen what could happen you might not walk away you might do something that puts you in a place where you shouldn't be. Begin to get angry. See, God is saying at the point, at that point, remember who you are. Remember that you're Christian. Remember who fights your battles for you. You know, sometimes it's hard to do that. It's, it's, it's some, it's just, sometimes it's hard to switch over to that place. When anger and frustration and it's getting real heated. We have to learn to stay cool in the heat. We got to stay under control because once you lose control, there's no telling what's going to happen. And that little phrase in the, in the scripture that says your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He's looking for you to get so upset and get you where you bet you at the tip of that thing. You, want, you just want to reach out and touch somebody. And you know what the devil do? The devil is like that, that guy in the neighborhood. Y'all already know this person. When somebody getting ready to fight, they put a line down there. And, they, and one, one the guy put a stick on your shoulder and put a stick on his shoulder. And I say, I bet you want. He's saying, I bet you won't knock it off. Now, me, and my, me and this guy getting ready to fight. But he instigating the thing. I bet you won't cross that line. I, I bet you won't knock that stick off his shoulder. That's the devil prowling around like a roaring lion to see who he can devour. You know, he's enticing your anger. He's tempting you in that anger. And you the big man on campus, you can't take it, man. You got to, hey, you want, man, you better do something. That's what the devil's saying, man. You, Mike, you better do something, man. You, you one of the top ball players on the campus, man. Everybody looking at you, man. Don't let him do you like that. Don't let him talk about you like that, man. And you, our word that we use uh, uh, that uh, make you do something that you didn't want to do, the word punk, P-U-N-K. Man, you couldn't be no punk. You be a punk, boy. You go, hey, somebody call you a punk, you better start fighting. And the devil counting on that. 
for you can get out of hand, do something that you might regret. God says to stay sober so you will have self-control. Now, y'all go to Proverbs 29, 11. Proverbs 29, I need you to see it because it's going to help you out. Proverbs 29, 11. The word says, fools give full vent to their rage. That's what a fool does. That rage starts rising up inside of him. He just say, I don't care what's going to happen. I'm, I'm going to follow this rage and I'm going to go with it. And then here's the opposite of that. But the wise bring calm to an end. See, that wise person that's in that heat, he, he, he's trying to uh, uh, calm that situation down. Even though it might make him look weak, but he's trying to calm things down. When the situation seems to be getting out of control, don't you go with the situation. You go the opposite way and find a solution. Even if that person would push you. I've been there. God pushed me. I, and I know I could whoop him. And he pushed me. I said, man, look, I, yeah, yeah, I was on my way to work that day. And uh, this situation happened. I was on my way to work one day. And a little guy was talking on the phone. And I'm sitting in my car. And I heard him. He's upset with his girlfriend. He's mad. And he walks toward the store door. I was getting ready to go in the store. And I got out the car, started walking to the store. And then he starts walking to me. I say, and in my head, I'm thinking, well, what is this guy walking to me for? I, you know, he mad at his girlfriend, you know, little, little Spanish guy. And I walk up there, and I'm walking. He walking to me. Now, he bracing up. I say, now, if he got a gun, he need to have it out right now. That's what I'm thinking in my head. If he have a gun, he need to have it out right now, because as soon as I get one step on him, I'm going to do what I got to do. That, that, that's in my mindset, because, I mean, if you grew up in the neighborhood where I grew up, somebody walking towards you, this is what you're doing right here. I don't know you. You don't know me, man. What you coming up with me for? Because I don't want him getting close to, uh, we call it steal. I don't want him to steal me. If anybody's going to do the stealing, I'm going to steal him. That means hit somebody first. So he's walking up to me, and I'm like, I, 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 and I'm, I stopped walking. You know, and he's still walking. I'm like, I, th I just, I say, dude, wait a minute. You really don't want to do this. I, I say, you don't want to do this, man, because I saw you just got through talking to your girlfriend on the phone. You upset at her. I don't know you. You don't know me. See, this is God talking. I don't know you. You don't know me. So don't walk up on me. You know, I'm going to go on in the store. You're going to do what you got to do. You know, I took a couple of steps over, and I walked, and he took a couple of steps on his way, and now we walked on. But you know, he ha you know how you have peripheral vision? It ain't quit. I'm, I'm looking at it. I'm tracing it. <laughs> <laughs> he might change his mind, and I'm going to be ready in case he do. But <laughs> that was allowing the Holy Spirit to take control. That was what you call a pitfall. The enemy wanted me to go there. I diffused the situation in my mind, a sober mind, alert mind, and I knew what was getting ready to happen. You know, even though I knew, but I think I knew. I think I could uh, whoop this guy. I thought I could. It was in my mind. And I, I know, and I know he probably thought the same thing. So when two people are thinking they can whoop the other, either, the other they gonna go at it, full force. That's what they do. That's what men do. Okay. So I had to be at a point where, like God wanted me to do, stay cool, stay calm, and stay collected. Cool, calm, and collected. That collective means you have all your wits about yourself, meaning that you're gonna deal with the situation in love and compassion while praying in your mind so that God can assist you, okay? That's, 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 that's what that is, that's your mind control. See, when Artes hit Wallace in the game, Wallace could have diffused the situation by calming down in his mind, acting with sober judgment, and letting the fire go. D didn't, didn't do anything, got the hard fire, he said, okay, man, I got you. And then go to the free throw line and hit those two free throws on him, and that'll hurt him worse. But he didn't do that. He didn't allow the Holy Spirit to, you know, lead him and guide him. He, he pushed it all to the side. Ego and manhood came up, and then he did, the, he did what he thought he should do, which was the wrong thing. He had a full vent of rage. What the, what the word said, that fool, that fool followed that rage. That's what he does. He goes out of full rage. 
God does not want us acting like fools. We're his children. We're not fools. We has his spirit. We're not fools. Listen to this. Go to Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8. Look at this. And y'all always say, I want you to see it, because I don't want you to think I'm making anything up. Because this word is going to change your life. Philippians chapter 4, verse 8 says, Finally, brothers and sisters, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. That's your mindset. I say, Lord, if a confrontation is coming my way and I start thinking about all these things, I'm going to forget I got a confrontation. I'm going to forget that whatever's happening, I'm, you know, I, I got all this stuff going in my mind. I'm going to forget all of that. You know, what space in my head do I have to take any kind of aggression if these are the thoughts you want me to think about, Lord? I don't, I don't have time to be doing nothing else. Think on these things. God here is telling us what we should be thinking about. And if you think about these things, you will have a sober mind at all times. You will be alert at all times. As a Christian, we must be in control of our mind at all times. Your thinking should be the right thing to do. How do we get all that right stuff? We read the word. We read the God's word and God's going to tell us. And what we haven't read, he's going to show us. He's going to put it in your heart and let you know, hey, don't do that. Don't say that. I know you're upset. Chill out. I got you covered. Holy Spirit coming to you just like that with, with calmness. Not excitement. He's coming with calmness. You know you shouldn't be doing that. Why are you going there? Why you want to hit the man? Don't hit the man. Just walk away. But he pushed me, Lord. Just walk away, Mike. But, Lord, I can't take that. He pushed me. He put his hand on me. Mike, just walk away. I got it. It's going to be all right. Trust me. You're my son. Trust me. Holy Spirit talking to you. I don't know exactly what he's saying, but he's talking to you. If, you. if you sit back and listen and don't push him down, push him away, all right, he's going to come up and talk to you and talk to your heart and give you a piece about what you need to do. Okay. Even though it might hurt mentally, because it ain't hurting you physically because anybody have nobody touched you yet. It's just hurting your ego. You know, ego, hurt ego is painful. But God said, I can't, I'm not going to give you nothing more you can bear. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to help you out. I'm, I'm trying to help you so you won't go to jail for hurting somebody or killing somebody. And I'm trying to help you so you won't be killed or whatever. I'm trying to keep you out of trouble, Mike. Okay, chill out, man. You know, because I used to have a quick temper. Somebody talk about me, my, talk about my mama. And the, the people would say, hey, don't, they play the doves and say, man, don't talk about his mama. Because his mama dead. And then the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to get the scratching and biting and kicking. I didn't care. I was that fool that had that, I went through that full rage. I was a young man, I was with me 12 maybe. You know, I slapped my best friend because he said something that I didn't like. That was insane. You know, my brother had to sit me down and talk to me. You know, and just by him talking to me, he made me realize. So I had to calm that thing down. If I get way up here, I have to push that anger down. I don't know if anybody had anger problems like that. Could it get to the top of your head? And the pressure be right on the top of your head. And you don't care what you're getting ready to do. You're going to hurt somebody. And that's where you were. That's where I was. So I had to have, uh, God had to teach me how to have sober judgment. How to be alert that the enemy is trying to take me to another place. Trying to put me in jail. Okay. Because you're in that neighborhood, you, as soon as you hit somebody and they tell it on you, man, you're going down. It's simple as that. If they can find you or whatever, you know, because, you know, once you do that, you're hiding and everything, you know. But you give enough, enough person some money in the neighborhood, you get found, because they'll tell it on you. I'm just, oh, that's something else. Let me go on. The second thing I want to talk to you about is the tongue, your speech. 
You got to have control over your speech or your tongue at all times. I don't know what old Wallace and, and our test was talking about. I can hear, I can see them talking on the screen, and uh, but whatever they were saying, I don't know what they were saying. But since they portrayed an out of control behavior, I can almost know that their speech was out of control too. Whatever they were saying. Now I want you to take a brief second and look back when you got angry and said hurtful words that maybe you shouldn't have said and you know, maybe you enjoy saying them at the time, I don't know. Out. Let me ask. Let me ask you this: Have any everybody ever been here in a fight when you were? Uh, I ain't talking about last night. And I'm talking about. I'm talking about when you were like 15 to 20 years old. Anybody been in a fight? I mean, a fight. I ain't talking about just no. Well, even a, even an argument fight, a fist fight, a bottle and a stick fight, a rock and a kick fight, a fight. Okay. Uh, out of control fight. He, it, it didn't stop till somebody gave up or somebody ran or whatever. Or somebody came and broke it up. Y'all been in a fight and y'all said some words. Every word that came out of your mouth wasn't just calm. You get hit. Man, don't you hit me no more. You ain't my arm. You ain't say no, like it wasn't that calm or, or those words. You said something. That's what that out of control, not having a sober mind, that's what, that's what happens when that anger sets in. You're out of control. Those words come out of your mouth. Look at this. I want you to go to Proverbs 21 and 23. Proverbs 21 and 23, I want you to see this. We're going to talk a little bit about how your mouth and your tongue can get out of control. The Word of God says, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 23 says, those who guard their mouth and their tongues keep themselves from calamity. That is so true. God is saying this because the tongue can get out of control and it's hard to tame. As a matter of fact, the words say you can't tame it. The tongue. You know, staying calm got me out of a ticket one day. I'm driving along, minding my own business, not breaking any rules or regulations, going the right speed. As a matter of fact, going maybe five, uh, deg five uh, miles, per hour miles per hour below the speed limit. I think it was like 40, and I was going like 35. And cop pulled up behind me, put his lights on, and you, you know you hear that whoop. And I'm like, man, what? Is he pulling me over? So I kept on driving for a little bit. He whoop, whoop. So I pulled over to the side, you know. And at this point, I'm angry because I know I hadn't done anything. Okay, I know I hadn't done I wasn't speeding. Why are you pulling me over? And what I did, I sat there. If you could, if, 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 if you could see me and what my head was thinking and what I wanted to say, you'll see a little cartoon character doing this here because my mouth want to say something and I'm holding it. I won't let it say nothing. So I got my hands on the steering wheel, the correct posture for when a cop pull you over. And uh, he says to me, I don't, I don't, rem I don't remember what he said, uh, but to, for me, I heard wah, 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 wah. It was nonsense. So I don't rem remember what he said, but I kept my mouth shut, didn't say a word, didn't say a word. Where you going, home, you know, where you coming from, work. That's it, short and tight, you know. And uh, he says, I'm going to give you a warning this time. Now, I could have said, what, what do you mean, a warning for what? I wasn't doing nothing. You trying to harass me. You know, see, you say all those things, you know what he's doing, right? 
unflicking his belt, unflicking his buckle, and got his hand on his piece. All right? Because, first of all, you, we, we, I'm, I'm not the right color for him. Okay? And he got, he got his, he, he could have been, that's what, I know that's what he would have done. But I kept my mouth shut, didn't do anything. He let me go with a warning. Keeping my mouth shut. See, whatever's in your heart, your mouth will say. Whatever's in your heart, your mouth will say. You got to control it. Have you ever been talking and you say something that you didn't want to say or didn't want nobody to hear? It slips out. That's what you say. Oh, it slips out. And then you say, oops. I ain't mean to say that. Well, let me tell you this. <laughs> if it was in your heart, you wanted to say it. It's about you controlling that thing and not letting it come out. But if you let it come out, you wanted to say it. You couldn't control it. It's right here. Let me prove that to you. Y'all looking at me like I'm not telling the truth. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. Go there. Matthew chapter 12, verse 34. And here's Jesus. He was talking to a, 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 some, a, a group of bad people. He called them vipers. He says, you brood, of, you brood of vipers. How can you, who are evil, say anything good? For what the mouth speaks, for what the mouth speaks, what the heart is full of. He's saying what's in your heart is what you're going to say. You're going to say that thing. When people are angry, most of the time, something is said out of anger out of some uncontrollable emotional state of mind or something like that. Your tongue is a dangerous tool. And whatever's in your heart, you're going to say, whether you believe it or not. Go with me to James chapter 3. And we're going we're to look at verse 5 through 12. Listen, listen, I want you to listen to what the, what the Bible says about the tongue. James chapter 3, verses 5 through 12. And it says, likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body. But it makes great boast. Consider what a great forest is set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also a fire, a world of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, set the whole course of one's life on fire, and is itself set on fire by hell. Then he says, all kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. Then he goes on to say, but no human being can tame the tongue. Can't no human being tame the tongue. You can't control it. You get mad enough, you get angry enough, that ego, that pride will make you say some things that you shouldn't say, that makes you say some things that's out of line. The word goes on to say, it's a, it's a restless evil full of deadly poison. A restless evil full of deadly poison. And it says, with the tongue, we praise our Lord and Father. And with it, we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. I'm looking, I can look at, some of you guys seen this, you can look at television, and someone will say, praise God, and then cuss the next sentence. Have y'all seen that on television? Or somebody doing a comedy skit, I used to look at comedy skits way back, and they'll say something about God, and, these, this, this, and say something good about God, and then the next sentence, blah, 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 you got to beep it. I, and when I read this, they say, Lord, you are so right. We praise you and everything, but when we get upset, we might cut somebody out. Out of the same mouth come praise and cursing, the word says. And then he says, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. It shouldn't be. You know what I know? And I, I wrote this down, and I'm going to read it. The way that others will know whether or not our faith is real is by what we choose to talk about and the way we speak. When people sit down and hear your conversation and they know that you're supposed to be a Christian and they hear some stuff that you talk about or hear you say some words that you shouldn't say, that they know Christians shouldn't say, right there, they examining you and I'm going to say judging you 
and putting you at a, a new plateau in their respect category. If you was here, you just got lowered by what you said and what you're talking about. Okay. If you're a Christian and you're talking bad about And they found out about him. And people all across the nation just talking about him. So somebody came to my house and they started talking. I said, wait, 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 wait. You know what? We're not going to do that. What we need to do is pray for that man. Pray for his family. Because at first he was on track. How do you think he got all those, those uh, 20,000 members? He was doing something that God wanted him to do, it, obviously. Okay? And he was, speaking, he was speaking God's word in people's lives. And their lives were being changed. So now that he got caught doing something that was not of God, then now everybody going to do this. What's that? Turn their back on him. No, we're not going to do that. We're supposed to be God's people. So we, what are we going to do? Let's build him back up. Let's start praying for him. Let's try to get him back on the right track. Let's ask God to forgive him. You know it's going to be up to God to forgive him, but God is a forgiving God. I knew a man that was murdering almost all his life, and, and Jesus told him to come on home with me, man. I got a place for you. So just, I know just that thing, oh, he can forgive you for that if you're willing to repent and change your life. See, that's our character. That's what we should be standing on praying. That's our duty, praying for people that are hurt, just like we did this morning, praying for you for, uh, for your situation this morning, asking God to help change your life, to put you on another plateau, to put you in another direction, to relieve you of all the discomfort that you're going through. Because you're saying I'm a Christian and you're up there talking about people to other folk, dogging them out, cussing at them and all this kind of stuff. They, hey, you're supposed to be a Christian. You, 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 you're fooling yourself because you, uh, Christians don't talk like that. But the, the bottom line is you need help from God to manage the things that come out of your mouth, to manage this tongue. You're going to need this help. You can't do it by yourself. The word already said, you can't tame the tongue. It's going to be prayer and practice. You hear that? Prayer and practice. If you used to talk too much and say the things you used to say, you're going to have, it's going to be prayer and practice. God, I need you to, to help me out, man. Uh, to this thing here to get me in all, in all kind of trouble. Can you help me shut it? Not say the things that I shouldn't say. What should I talk about, Lord? 
God's going to read, read my word. But we're going to tell you what you need to talk about, how you need to think. The psalmist Dave, David prayed this prayer in Psalms 141 and 3. He said, set a guard over my mouth, Lord. Keep watch over the door of my lips. This is David. David loved God. God loved David. I said, why David praying about his mouth? Because some of us are just like David. Get up here and pray for people. Okay, and, and say some things that you shouldn't say. God, somebody need to be praying that prayer right now. Go out my mouth, Lord. Keep watching over the doors of my lips. Don't let nothing come out that's not, that's not wholesome, that's not edifying, that's not building people up. All that stuff that's coming out that's, that, that's uh, opposite of that, God, don't let it come out of my mouth. Somebody need to be praying that because at one time or another you said some things that you shouldn't say. And sometimes even today, even yesterday, you might have said something that you shouldn't be saying. I said maybe. I didn't say for sure. Don't want y'all think I'm talking about you. I just said maybe. If you did do that, we need to be praying about it. Amen. The last thing. Number three, we as Christians should have control of our actions at all times. I keep going back to running our tests, the, the, the actions. They, had, they were out of control in mind, speech, and, in, and, and no doubt they were out of control in their actions. They was, they was tussling and fighting. Go with me to Luke chapter 6, verse 27 and, and, and 29. We almost finished, y'all, but I got to take my time and tell you because we got to have control of our mind on what we say and what we do. People are looking at us all the time. Y'all don't think they are. People are looking at you. If you told somebody that you go to church and you're a Christian, somebody looking at you. Your kids, your, oh man, your kids are definitely looking at you. My God. My God. <laughs> My God, they looking at you, man. My grandkids, they looking at me. I say something crazy, Poppy, oh, why you say that? That's why folk can tell who you are by what you say and what you do and what, how you think. Because whatever you think is what you're going to do and say. People are examining you. And they're talking, behind, they're talking to you behind, talking to other people about, about you behind your back when you mess up. Oh, he's supposed to be a Christian? And he said that? And he did that? You know, she said she's a Christian. She said she go to church every Sunday. What I wonder what church they go to because I don't want to go to that church. You know how that's how we think. You know that's how we think. What, they, what are you teaching them over there? Boy, they stay in church a long time. That's like a cult. I ain't going over there. I ain't never been in a church. Church, they take day okay? Church too long. See, people are thinking of all kind of things about you as Christians, and they don't even know some of them. That's why we got to be careful what we say and what we do and how we talk. Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 29 says this. But to you, but to you who are listening, I say, are you listening? Well, Luke say, to you who are listening, I say, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who mistreat you. Well, let me read that again, because y'all, y'all, I see all them little old bubs going off and, you know, question marks and, Pitchforks and all. you know how you see them little cartoon characters and they got all them little designs and stuff. I see some of that in here. Let me read it again. <laughs> but to you, you're <laughs> who are listening, I say, love your enemies, guys. Love them. Do good to those who hate you. I know you're thinking about some people right now. Bless those who curse you, not cuss you, curse you, and those who curse you too. 
and pray for those who mistreat you. Pray for them. If someone's, oh, here it is right here. If someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. God, give them, give, God, give them strength right now. Let them hear your word. Let them be obedient to your word. I'm just praying for them right now, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Because all you got to do is say Jesus' name, and that changes everything. I'm hoping he's changing your minds and your hearts right now. All you that's out there viewing, I'm hoping he's changing your hearts and your minds right now. Jesus, help them. Help us all, Lord. Because if one, someone slaps you on one cheek, turn to them the other also. That's two slaps. It, I mean, it's a possibility of two slaps, because you might turn down, they might not hit you. If someone takes your coat, do not withhold your shirt from them. Give to everyone who asks you, and if anyone takes what belongs to you, do not demand it back. Here's the kicker right here. Here's the kicker, verse 31. Here's the kicker. Okay? Uh, for, for me, this just smooth it all out for me when I first read it. This smooth it all out for me. Do to others as you would have them do to you. Do to others as you would have them do to you. That's what I want to happen, Lord, that we don't have a confrontation. What I want is that we have peace with each other. Who are my enemies? Who is it that don't like me and I don't like them? And every time I come around them, I got to watch them because I don't trust them. That's too much. Don't you know that's too much work? When I was a kid, that was a lot of work, man. You walk into a party and your, your, your friends you had fights with it before they there. And, and, and the first thing is having, you got to have sense and, and, and have a combative state of mind. So when you walk in the place, you want to make sure that wherever you stand, there's nobody behind you. So you stand against the wall. I'm just telling you. Because you had, you had those combative skills that you had to have. You had to know that. Because somebody come behind you, hit you with anything. Okay? Oh, you, and you got to walk home. You don't walk 15 miles to the party. This is a party you ain't going to miss. Everybody been talking about it all week. You don't have a car. You know, we walking. In our good shoes. Our nice shirts. And our nice pants. Get there, you good and sweaty. Still getting dances and stuff like that. You know, yeah, that's what you're going for. Well, when you get in the when you get in there, me and my friends, this is where we at, right here. Because we know those guys are going to be there. Okay, back in those days, it wasn't a lot of guns. You know, they had some sticks, some bottles, but it wasn't a lot of guns. So that's probably the only thing you had to worry about. Or if they have too many, then you got to go on, get on. Now you got to run in your new shoes and your new slacks and your new pants. You see, I, I'm just telling you, that, had, that was the mindset. And you had to go in there and you had to be thinking on, oh, that's too much work. That's too much work for a 60-year-old man. <laughs> I don't need no trouble. As a matter of fact, I'm going to make some friends. I don't need no enemies. I can't run. I'm 60 years old. Used to be one of the fastest boys on our, on our basketball team. I can't run a league now. My little, my little grandsons, we racing, they beat me. He's five. And I'm running hard, too. It's, it's, it's time to change your mindset. <laughs> 
do unto others as you have them do unto you. This is the type of action and response God wants us to, to have to bring him glory. To have that type of love. God demands that from us as Christians. He wants you to represent, to portray his love, to represent him. Okay? That's what I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> Devastating consequences, man. Someone getting in your face saying appropriate, inappropriate things, things that's getting you heated. It's time to step away from that situation. Stay calm. Don't let your pride and your ego get in there and make you angry. Move on, man. My, my, my only thing is that I have to pray to God for, I, this is what I can't stand. This is what I, can, I don't know if I'm going to be able to handle this. Is that person in my face, even today, that person in my face going crazy all in front of me and he do this? I don't know. I don't know. I'm asking God to help me and don't let me get in that situation. Even though I'm 60 years old, I just hope you be there with me, sister, <laughs> to help me pray, because I'm going to need some help. And I'm not perfect. I mean, I'm saying that because I'm not perfect. I'm saying that to you because you're not perfect. It's a thing that you can't stand. It's a thing that you just can't let it go. It's a thing, but God is telling us, hey, man, have a sober mind. Be alert, Pastor Mike. I hear what you're saying. I know how it's going to make you feel, but I'm here for you. I'm here to fight your battles for you. I'm here with you. So if that comes, I'm going to be here with you. But I just need you not to do nothing. But here's the thing. God gives us a choice, don't he? Give us free will. That's the, that's the, that's the scary part. Okay? That's that scary part for me. All right? I'm just going to say that. But I'm going to let you guys know I'm going to be trying my best. I'm going to be praying. I'm going to be trusting God. So I got to let you know that because if you're in the same situation I am in that particular cir circumstances, I want to let you know I'm with you. Don't do nothing. Let's wait on the Lord. I, I know I got a scripture, 27, 14 in Psalms say, wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart. And then, go, and then again it says, wait for the Lord. Father, I'm going to wait. That's what my mindset is today, and I hope it's like that tomorrow. But, uh, Lord, I'm going to wait on you. I'm going to diffuse the situation, walk away, and let God, you want to lead me and guide me. But it's just what I know for sure. He will do it. He'll do it. I've seen him do it. That's what gives me confidence. And that if that situation comes, I'm going to trust God. I want you guys to trust God. This is what I want you to take with you. Everything starts with the control of your mind. If you have mind control, then what's in your heart will be right, and what comes out of your mouth will be right as well. Your actions and your speech is going to be okay if you got it controlled right here. If you know who you are and who you belong to, and you know that he's fighting your battles for you, then when that comes, I can walk away. Keep yourselves under control at all times. Keep your eyes on Jesus, stay alert and sober-minded. Always be aware that the devil is roaming around. He's trying to put that stick on your shoulder. He's trying to draw that line in the sand to tempt you to do something you don't have no business doing. He's trying to knock you off course, y'all. But y'all need you to know this. God is in control. And he is your key to keeping yourself under control at all times. Well, that informative for you. Give God a hand clap of praise. I, I was hoping I didn't take too long, but I had to give you what God gave me to give you. Come on, guys, pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you for your word. Thank you that we are putting that word inside of us right now in our hearts, and we're going to protect it, Lord, but we need your help. We want to give this word that you give us today, give it out there to that dying world. Some people have uh, anger issues, and we know some people with anger issues. Give us the confidence.
and the courage to talk to those people about their anger situation. I don't care if it's your wife or your husband. Talk to them. God gives you permission to talk to them and give you protection to talk to them. All you got to do is talk to them. Lord, thank you. Father, there might be someone in this place that have not declared Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And there might be someone in here that want to rededicate their lives to the Lord. If that's you that's viewing or sitting in, that want to give your life to the Lord this morning, or rededicate, or rededicate your life to the Lord this morning, I want you to raise your hand up if that's you in-house. In and all I'm going to do is ask you to stand where you are. You don't have to walk up or do anything. You can just stand up for rededication or salvation. If you're out there viewing, just, uh, just, just stand up and repeat this prayer after me. Say, Dear Heavenly Father, forgive me for all of my sins, the sins I know of, the sins I, not, I know not of. Today, God, I want to confess that Jesus Christ is my Lord. And Lord, I believe that God raised him from the dead. God, thank you for saving my life. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen and amen. If you said that prayer of salvation, that prayer of rededication, I believe that you're saved and rededicated. And all I want you to do is tell three people. Tell mom, dad, your wife. Just tell three people, somebody in the congregation, that I gave my life to the Lord today or I rededicated my life to the Lord today. Amen. If you... If you're out, if, if, I know you're out there, you're listening, you're viewing, put it in your comments, amen, that you're giving your life to the Lord today. It might be someone in here. Well, let me say this. I don't want you to go, I want you to get into a, a church that's teaching the word of God and, and, and living the word of God. And I want to invite you to the House of Prayer Christian Fellowship Church. If you're in house or viewing, I want to invite you today to become a member of the House of Prayer Christian Fellowship Church. Let me tell you a little bit about us. We're a God-fearing church. We do everything by the Word of God. Everything that we know that we should do by the Word of God, that's what we do. We're, we're a God-fearing church. We're a God-believing church. A Bible word-doing church, okay? That's where we live, right there. And if you want to belong to a kind of church like that, we're going to love on you. We're going to give you the word of God. We're going to pray with you when times are good, pray with you when times are bad. And then we're going to teach you this word some more, and we're going to love you some more. That's what we do at the House of Prayer, Christian Fellowship Church. Amen. And if you want to become a member, you, uh, you're viewing out there, write it in your comments. If you want to become a member here, guys, just raise your hand if you're not a member already. Glory to you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, guys. I want you to... I want you to stand up for our benediction before I dismiss you. Come on, guys, stand up for me. If you can, stand up. And the benediction scripture is coming from Galatians 5, 22 through 25. And the word of God says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, forbearance, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things, there is no law. Those who belong to Christ, Je those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Come on, guys, repeat after me. No prayer, no power. Little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. Hey Amen. God, I want you to come back next week. I want you to bring somebody else. I want to tell you we love you guys and God bless you. Amen. And uh, I pray traveling grace over everybody going back home. Amen. Amen. Thank you, guys.